it's bloody cold. It's Monday morning. I shall take you in and show you. Underneath a lot of the buildings in Warwick is massive great big tunnels. So we've come through here, down here. Oh, to this, it is going to be so cool, I'm telling you. This is an inline, what we call, bunny traps. I basically said, let me take that. If I need it, I'll use it. If not, I'll prop it back. So, I'll bring it back. Watch a moan now, look. Another big Sean, look. Another day, another dollar. Oh, he's got a big lead too today. Got hit there. Valley here, Rich there, couple rafters there. And fucking six blokes here to do the job. I cannot, for the life of me, find the stop tap. Right, morning, welcome back to the channel. As you can see by the front of the van, it's bloody cold. It's Monday morning, so if you remember back to Monday morning, it was, oh, it was a bloody cold morning. I'm just sat in the van while it's de-icing. I'm, I'm not one to scrape the windows. I'd rather just f fire the van up, go and make a coffee, or don't have coffee anymore. Well, I do, I've had a couple. Go in the house, keep warm while the van defrosts. Before we go anywhere, I know I'm gonna keep begging till we hit it. We wanna get to 10,000 subscribers by the 1st of Jan. I think we've got like 700 to go. So that is mega. Thank you, every single one of you that has hit the subscribe button. If you haven't and you watch the channel a lot, just hit that subscribe button. It helps me out, helps the channel out, helps the algorithms out, all that jazz. But the main thing is, I just want to try and get to 10,000 subscribers by the 1st of Jan, which is the channel's first birthday. Once we've done that, I'll stop begging. So if you're sick of hearing me, just hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed the podcast the other day, If whoever's watched it. If you haven't watched it, I'll put the link below. Drop onto the Trade Legends podcast, watch that, because it's a great watch. And I couldn't remember half the stuff that we did when we were filming it and watched it back and it's a good lap, good crack so today what have we got today we've got to go to a hairdresser's um, uh, a hairdresser's in warwick this lady bought the shop premises <clears throat> for a hairdresser so we've got to go and set the basins up you know the ones where the old ladies sit back and have their hair washed we've got to do all that so we've got to go there i've had a look it's going to be a little bit awkward the way we do it so we're going to go to plum basin now pick some bits up then go to the hairdressers place these basins out where we need them It'll be quite interesting i think um, and go from there. So, quick shout out to Dean Macy who won the Unilight Talon Trade Legend stuff. Well done, Dean. And thanks for everyone who also entered and that. So, yeah, so I'm going to get that stuff off to Dean this week. Right, let's uh, finish defrosting the van and get to it. So, I've just got to this um, hairdressers that we're going to be doing. I shall take you in and show you. So, where I am in Warwick, we've got the castle and underneath a lot of the buildings in Warwick is massive great big tunnels. Now this hairdresser's is going under, literally under the ground, I'll show you. So we come through here, down here, opens out into this, it's gonna be, it is gonna be so cool, I'm telling you. So this will be reception area, but like all the vaulted, all the vaulted ceilings and what. It was a restaurant, it was some sort of a restaurant before and she's converting it into a real smart hair salon. So it's all gonna be in here, like the hairdresser stations. But what we come to do is, what she wants is these chairs. This was the old sort of kitchen prep area. She's keeping all the stainless steel stuff on the walls and obviously cleaning it all up and stuff like that. But we've got to take that sink out and fit these two hair stations in. So, because the waists are here, we're gonna have to come, I don't know if I'm gonna see, gonna have to come with the waist out the side and then into here with an inline trap. Same with the hot and colds, are gonna have to come out the side because they're meant to ideally go chopped in the floor and come out the floor, but we can't do that here. So we're gonna have to come out there and then the chippies will then box round it and make it into sort of like a, a shelf area. Um, these have got inbuilt blending valves so we can just connect straight into the hot and cold but we'll have to take all this pipe work back 
and again here take this back and make it as neat as possible. It's all going to be boxed in anyway so it's basically a case of getting it working and then the chippies can box it all in again we're going to have to come out the side here and into there in line. So that's today's little job. Told you I always get something a little bit quirky. Right, so what we'll start with, we'll turn the isolation valves off, cut the hot and coals right back to here, so we can do that in new copper. Take this sink out, cut the waste back to where we need them. I'll probably go right back there and start afresh, and then start getting them into position. So we've got the basin out, sink out, and we've got all the pipe work out. Basically ripped it all the way back. So I've converted from the push fit onto here, so we can now come off and solve and weld. Um, and I've took all the pipe work out, put new copper in, just so it looks better. So we connect that in there and then I've marked on the wall just here, this is where it's got to stab out for this first hair station and then I've marked over there as well for where it's got to stab out. But yeah, we'll start getting the pipe work out of here and then we can offer the, the actual hair stations into place and see where they're going to go. So I'm going to leave these just sticking out because then we can cut them off, put two isolation valves to feed this station. Yes, I know there's a couple there, but we put two isolation valves on here to shut this one off and the same there. So we just leave it sticking out. Then when we push it into place, we can pipe it up to exactly where it needs to go. Okay, so we've got the waste in the hot and cold in. So what I'm going to do now is offer this into position here and then hopefully get around this side to connect it up. I'm not sure how we're going to do the waste on it yet. So let's get it into position and see just what we can do. So as I said, the waste here, um, these, these are meant to go into the floor. So what I'm going to do is cut a hole in the side here, work out exactly the height, cut a hole in the side redirect that waste out so that everything's going to be this side and we'll take the hot and colds out there as well so that when the seat's in i'll, I'll put it in position and show you but when the seat's in you'll be able to get access to the pipe work that side it's the only way you can do it because as i said these are meant to go directly into the ground So if we put two more holes in, there's two more holes, we'll do it a little bit lower down for the hot and colds to come out. Perfect, it did work. So we've got them poked out there and I can connect onto here. So we'll put this chair into position and see how we are. Okay, I've got that one connected up waste wise anyway. I need to go and get some bits for the uh, for the water on it. But I thought I'd just show you. So this is an inline, what we call fanny traps. So inside there, if you can see it, um, it's basically, it's gonna go in line. So this is the only way I'm gonna be able to do this. Popping that on there, then a reducer down to inch and a quarter off there. And then, because of that, we'll, I can pop that in there and it will seal up on that inch and a quarter, like that. So it's the only way of doing it, which isn't a problem on these because Kate's gonna have stations built across this anyway. Um, and also, I'm gonna leave a little bit of flex on that so that she can move these around slightly. And with these, it's going to be a stretch to connect it there so what i'm going to do is get another braided hose for each of them to go on there just so that she can move this station around 
It's not massive draws on the water, so it's not going to make the slightest bit of difference. It just means that if she needs to move these around for sweeping up and stuff like that, it's going to work. So we'll pop that on there. We'll get this connected up and I'll show you exactly what I mean when it's all in. There we go. Those two hair stations are in. As I've said, as I always say on this channel, this is real world plumbing because we've had to we've had to come out the back here and get onto it somehow with the waste which we've managed to do that's fine um as for the flexes we've put another flexi in here i know people are going to go in on me for it this and the other but these stations need to move she needs to be able to move them to sweep up around them so that was the best way of doing that so it's going to be more practical for her but she's going to have box input around there um, to cover obviously to cover that pipe work up because they're going to like if each of them are going to be using it There'll be one in there one in there because that was the only physical way of getting the wastes out And still being able to have them working so So the flexes are on them so she can move them around and clean them out and everything like that. We've tested on All is good, all is fine Quite powerful as well, so we may have to just tweak that. I think she's on about getting we've all seen them you know these Things meant to save energy, I don't know, if they work. don't know if they work or not, but right, so that's that done. Um, again, it, it was a case of getting in this morning, right? Okay, looking at it, how are we going to do it? I've done, I did some of these probably two or three years ago, um, in another hair salon, so I sort of knew how they work, but yeah, with the flexes on, she can move them around, so that's bang on. We've got a set of taps to change in here now. I cannot, for the life of me, find the stop tap. Every, you know as well as I, if you're a plumber, you know a rough idea of where stop taps are going to be. The thing is, with these old, like I've said, these cellar basement things in Warwick, the whole of Warwick is full of tunnels and stuff like that, so a lot of them have been converted. Now, I've followed all the pipe work round, the boiler's in there, it's not in there. Um, I've gone ev basically everywhere where we would think the stop tap's going to be, can't find it anywhere. Which, A, Kate needs to know because if this is going to be a salon, she needs to know if and when the water has to get turned off. So I'm going to message her, she's going to get hold of the landlord, he's going to tell us exactly where it is. Once we've found that, shut it off and get these taps changed, probably tail end of the week. At least now she can get all this cleared out and clean, wipe all the walls out and do whatever she's got to do for a new business. So. Right, um, what have we got now? I think I'm gonna go and look at a shout. A mate of mine's come. It's always a mate of mine, isn't it? Always a mate of mine. Uh, a mate messaged me and said his shower isn't getting red hot. So we're gonna take a look at it. It might be the thermostat in it. If it is, we'll probably just change the whole bar shower. It's cheaper, quicker, easier to just change it. You can get a decentish bar shower for, off the top of my head, I don't know, 50, 60 quid, something like that. So, I know so I'll just go, yeah, just swap it, get it done, you need your shower. Otherwise, if it's a thermostatic cartridge, we'd have to match it up and then probably order it and it will take a couple of days. It'll just go change the shower. So we'll get tidied up here and we'll go and do that. So I've just swung round to my mates to do that shower. Um, he rung me or sent me a message and said when he's turning the heat inside of it, it just weren't getting hot. So I said to him, it sounds like the thermostat's gone. I'll pick a replacement shower because it's just quicker. He was like, yep, yeah, sound, do whatever. So I've just gone there to do it and I thought I'll pop up, see what was wrong with it. And basically, because where we live, it's quite limey, the water. So the water's got into the actual knob for the uh, hot and cold, the, therm the thermostat side, and just you know stuck, weren't going all the way around to hot. So freed that up for him squirted a little bit of fairy liquid in it just to ease it make it work a bit better job done sorted so i'm gonna pop the shower back to uh dave at plum base fair play to me i basically said let me take that if i need it i'll use it if not i'll prop it back so i'll bring it back watch and moan now look Right, so we're back on this barn today. We've got, to, I've literally got this day here because Matt and Nathan are in um, tiling the floor in the bathroom renovation. So hopefully for the rest of this week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we'll be on that job, finishing that off. So today I'm here, I'll take you in and show you in a minute, but we've got to get hot and colds connected up and into the stud work the other side of uh, the sort of vaulted ceiling. The only way across was through that steel. And we've also got to get a shower tray in, ready for, believe it or not, the tiler next week, he's coming in. So we've got to get that tray in, get that set up, get the pipe working for it, and uh, 
fill the day basically here. So I will take you in and show you what we've got. Funny. Another Big Sean, sure look, another day, another dollar. So we've got the hot and cold to connect upstairs. Let me just take you up. I've literally jumped on this job for today. We'll be back tomorrow, hopefully, um, getting the bathroom renovation pushed along. So what we're on today is, we've got the hot and cold and the second drop coming up here from downstairs and it's going up to that point there which in then in turn is going across there to feed that bathroom so we've got to connect that into the main loop that we've put in while we're waiting for nathan matty to tile the floor of the bathroom we'll get this done and we've also got shower tray to go in here so the toilet believe it or not so the toilet can start next week i know it seems odd that the toilet's coming in already but we've got the decorator upstairs painting the top of the vaulted ceiling because he's not going to get there unless he's got mega mega long ladders so you're going to get the tray in as well it's meant to be arriving today so we'll get the tray in probably get the pipes poked through the wall then terry the toilet can get all that tiled as i said before this is scott's own house he's happy with moisture balls going on the tile onto it that's up to him. Uh, so we've got the laser level set up. We're going to put three sets of clips, 222s, 115, to go up from this point here up to pick up the pipes where they come through there. And then the return will go across the, the steel and then I'll loop it back. So it's basically going across to just come back. But it's got to do that to keep the hot water over that side of the house instantly. So we'll draw the holes, get the clips in, and start getting some pipe work in. So that's those clipped in, clipped in there, clipped into what connected. I don't know if you find, if you do work with plastic, you know when it's been on a coil like that, and when you're trying to lay it flat, they just kick out at the end, especially the 22 mils, just so, such a pain in the ass, so rigid. Usually you can get a bit of heat on it, but obviously this job's like really two degrees at the minute, so there's no warmth in the pipes to try and bend them back but obviously when it's in and hot and everything like that it will sort of form a straight straight pipe but for the minute it's just hard to hard to fiddle around and work with but uh we'll get there it's just fucking whacked me straight in the head as well you know when you're trying to bend it round and cut it it fucking hit me back back in the head right so after a lot of fucking around i've managed to get these pipes through there we've got to lag them all and clip them all on that yet but they're literally coming through here. Again, you can see, we've got the second drop lagged. We've got to carry on lagging the rest of them. Comes through here and then goes up. Now this is gonna be the bit of the awkward bit, to be fair. So, we've got here, I don't know if you can make it out. Here is the secondary return. This is the hot. So the hot's coming across. Secondary return's teed into it. So it basically loops, constantly loops round. So then when you pull, when you draw off here to feed this bathroom, you've only got to get that little last bit of hot water through because the hot's been looping around in that bit. If that makes sense, it's probably not the best explanation, but I'm just trying to get all this done before the electricians get too many cables through. So let me try and do a bit of a drawing. I'm no good at these drawings, so bear with me. So you've got the hot coming in here, cold coming in here. Say that's your bathroom, that's your bathroom point. And say your boiler is all the way down the other end of the building here. So, there's your cold. Uh, there's your hot, sorry. And your cold is coming from the main, for instance. So, this is your hot pipe. If it's coming this way, it's dabbing off to do bathroom here, bathroom there, bathroom there. With a secondary return, you tee this in here, come back to the cylinder like so pumping that way it's literally going to then just consistently pull that hot water loop like that so then when you go to your bathroom here it's only put there's already hot water to here it's only pulling that bit in as opposed to completely cold all the way back from there to there so that's the hot and colds brought to the furthest part of the building we've got them into the joist here into the stud work here so we can work from that same there, we've got them there. So I say this end is the furthest part, the boiler and that is right in that corner. So they've come across, 
because as I said before this whole floor is coming out so they've come across through there through that steel along the back and into there and drops down here and then down the floor there so that's the majority of the plumbing done the majority of the hot and cold done in the building so we've now got to get the uh, shower tray into this room here ready for the toilets to come in look here's Sean he wants to be on camera but he's just hiding in the background so I've gone Friday oh he's got a big lean to today big lean to got hip there valley here ridge there couple rafters there and fucking six blokes here to do the job yeah and steel down there so we're going to look at fitting this tray now inside this bathroom in the corner of this bathroom where it's going to go but i just want to show a few people I, whenever i fit a tray whenever i fit a tray i always bed it down on silicon never had an issue with it never a problem in 20 25 odd years of fitting shower trays and stuff like that not a problem loads of silicon doesn't go anywhere you get people saying, oh, it's got to be bedded down. What if it cracks, this, that, and the other? It never does. However, these trays, if you look at all four corners, these trays can be put on legs. So it shows it here in the picture on legs, completely off the floor, like so. So it's only going to be fixed by them four points. So it's going to be raised up off the floor, a couple of inches. It's not supported at all under there, and it's still fine. So if it's fine to put on legs with a two two inch gap underneath it with no support, as shown in the uh, manufacturer's instructions booklet, then it's perfectly fine to have spread base of silicon over the bottom when you lay it down. So just thought I'd address that little issue because he's got it in the book. So I just offered the tray into place and marked out where the, the hole for the waste is and we can work out around it. But, these two, ideally you'd want it at the back where the shower's coming in, but these two are running on a big triple joist that's underneath, literally goes straight away across. So it's gonna to have to be one of these two at the front. Now if you're having a door coming in, or a door that way, or a slider, you don't want it right at the front. So that's the one we're gonna go for. Because it's got a bit of a recess underneath here, we're gonna trim out that whole area cut that out and then we can drop the tray, trap from underneath and pipe it up from underneath. <laughs> Fortunately, with this tray, I've been able to lay it down, put it into position, put the waist on, and tuck it underneath the floor, and get it marked up underneath so we know exactly where it's gonna go. So I put the three marks on it, so now I can silicon the waist up, get that in, tightened in position, and then lay the tray down onto that, because it will literally slip in and cut underneath there. So we'll get this siliconed up, get the tray sealed on the bottom, bedded down, I know all the floors level, know the trays level, and then get it in. So I've got the silicon on the bottom of the tray. People are gonna say, you can't do it that way. Yeah, I've had it loads and loads of times. This is how I've always bedded trays down for 20 years. So never had an issue with it. So that's that tray in. What I'll do now is put a bead of silicon around the back and then that's in, done. Moisture boards, I said, like I've said before, this build is for Scott, it's his own house. He's happy with their moisture boards going on, so. That's now to do with me. Right, I've also just got the gerbrick framing for the floating toilet as well. I completely forgot to film it. So that's basically in place, bolted in, strapped into the wall. So once that's boarded back over, all you'll have there is a flush plate and a floating pan there with the connections in the back. So that's it, done for the barn for today. A few little bits we got done today. Finish the hot and colds off, finish the secondary hots off, and we're basically ready to go now. Start positioning the weather bathrooms are going toilets going sinks going but it's just filled the day so tomorrow i'm back on the bathroom renovation so hopefully i'll get that finished off and 
with a bit of luck you'll see part three and the final to that on Sunday. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and drop me a comment below and I'll catch you soon.